All right, welcome. Today we'll be discussing about um, breeding of cross-pollinated plants. But before we talk about um, you know, cross-breeding, it's very important for you to understand uh, the word pollen and pollination. Pollen is um, a fine, you know, powdery particles that contains the male gamete, which is essential for sexual reproduction in plants. Why pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same plant or of another plant. So the pollen there can be likened to, to as what the male gametes, which is known as what the, the stamen or the anther. And the process of transferring the Pollen or the pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same plant or of another plant is known as what pollination. So, cross pollination is um, is a natural process, okay? Because it involves the, you know, you know, the help of you know insects and wind, okay? You can see insects like on the butterfly, the the bees pollinating, uh, you know, plants, okay? Because when they come to feed on uh, the nectar of a plant, they rub themselves. They rub, uh, you know, the pollens on the cells unknown to themselves. Then they now transfer this pollen to another world, to another location. Or it can be assisted by wind in the sense that um, as wind is blowing, it is transferring pollens, okay, from one source of production to another place for, you know, fertilization. Okay. Cross pollination is the process of applying pollen from one flower to the pistol of another one. If you if if you don't want to allow the wind or the insect to do it, you can do it yourself. Okay, that's why we work today by the use of hand. You know to get your what your desirable traits. You don't just cross pollinate anyhow. For example, as a plant breeder, you don't just cross pollinate anyhow. You must have an objective in your mind. Why do I want to pollinate or why do I want to you know cross pollinate these plants? There must be an objective in mind. Maybe for example, let's take an example. You have um, you have a maize seed, okay? And anytime you plant this maize seed, the maize seed is not sweet, but it produces you know many seeds at the end of harvest. The maize seed, if you cook it, is not sweet, but the seeds are many. Now maybe you you went somewhere, you saw another maize seed that is growing, but this time around, this maize seed you saw growing, the seeds are not many. But when you cook it, it is very sweet. So what do you have at the end of the day? You have um, two situations here. You have a maize plant that produces many what that produces many seeds, but the seed is not sweet. Then you have another what maize what plant that produces few seeds and the seed is very sweet. So what do you do as what a plant breeder? Your objective here is to what to produce a hybrid or to produce a plant. At the end of the day, that's what the the the, the 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 seed will be many and the and the seed will be tasty. So what do you do? You cross pollinate them in order for you to have what your desired objective, which is known as what the hybrid. So we have um, examples of um, plants that um, that could self pollinate. And that could also cross pollinate. For example, self pollinated crops we have um, Orisa sativa, we have um, Tratecuma sativum, we have um, oats, we have berry, we have pears, we have cow peel. And cross pollinated plants we have corn, okay, you have alfalfa, you have radish, cabbage, sunflower, etc. etc. So, breeding method in cross pollinated plants. What are the breeding method in crop pollinated plants? So let's look at crop pollinated plants, for example. While method for improving cell pollinated species tend to focus on improving individual plants, I want you to understand that when you want to self pollinate or when crops are self pollinating, the aim is to improve what the individual plants. On the other hand, cross pollination tends to improve a population of plants. Okay, it tends to improve what a population of plants on the field so that the plant population is going to give you, you know, a desirable trait at the end of the day. So that's the difference between what self-pollination and what crop pollination. Crop pollination 
tends to improve what the population of that plant why self pollination tends to improve what the individual what plants what is the population a population is a large group of what interbreeding individuals okay large group of what individual that can what interbreed what kind of plants can be what can be crossbreed any two plants of the same what genus can what be crossbreed for example you did your plant taxonomy in your, in your uh, you know in your primitive level okay we, we came to discover that what um, on the hierarchy given to us by Carolus Linnaeus okay the hierarchy starts from what species to what to family okay so if you want to cross pollinate plants you must cross pollinate that plant at what the genus level that is at the general level for example we have um, you know a, a plant known as what caspicon chinensi the caspicon there is what the genus why this chinensi is there is what is the species so what do you do you you don't you don't cross pollinate species take note of that you cross pollinate what genus and that's why we call it what uh, that's what we call it a uh, inter you know intergeneric crossing intergeneric crossing okay over time uh interspecific crossing has not been successful so intergeneric crossing is what is successful and is what we are still practicing up to now so for example you can decide to cross um you know caspicon chinensi with what caspicon fruticens so you can see you're crossing that what at the genus there because you have what caspicon there which is attached to chinensis and you also have what caspicon which is attached to what fruticians okay so those are um, you know two pepper species okay within the same genus which is what caspicon take note of that so let's look at the difference between plant breeding and genetic mo modification you might be wondering, is there any difference between plant breeding and genetic modification? The answer, well, the answer is what? Yes, there's differences. Okay, there's differences. So plant breeding is not the same thing as genetic modification. So in plant breeding, it's a natural um, process of selecting what plants, okay? It's a natural process of what selecting plants okay it could be done by human or it could be done naturally with the help of what wind and what insects why genetic modification is done in the lab okay which involves what biological modification at cellular level so in the lab you'll be doing all this kind of um, what we call the in vitro culturing of organisms so that at the end of the day you're going to have what gemo which is known as what genetically what modify organism so these organisms are born in the lab okay so plant breeding is different from what genetic what modification question is plant breeding safe standard plant breeding or standard plant cross breeding is a natural process which occur when pollen transferred are being transferred from one plant to another it is a form of reproduction in plants take note of that in mass production crop breeding Procedures are taken to ensure food are safe to consume. Most plants in the world produce at least some level of harmful ingredients. Now, you need to understand that most of these plants that we eat produce some harmful ingredients. So, if you want to know if plant breeding is safe, you must first of all consider the plants you want to crossbreed. For example, plants have uh, you know toxic ingredients which are known as the secondary metabolites or the allylochemicals, which has the saponin, the tannin, okay, the, the glucoside, okay. All the secondary metabolites can be present in some parts or uh, can be present in some you know areas of the plants, could be present in the roots, it could be present in the fruits or in the seed. So before you breed, you must first of all study these ingredients in the plants okay so that at the end of the day you don't you don't you don't produce something that is toxic to the environment okay so we have there are less natural form of plant breeding like mutation breeding okay this is a less what natural form of plant breeding like mutation breeding image you know you know you know mutation already in your biology which is what the a sudden change in what in the 
in the structure of chromosome or in the number of chromosome okay now we have chemicals that can cause mutation okay like the phenol the formalin okay we have uh, radiation again from x ray gamma ray beta ray okay even from the x ray machine in the hospital all those radiation can cause mutation so if you want to practice mutation breeding you must be very careful because if you miss this chemical for example if you miss phenona you will say for example you put um you know a petri a petri dish then you pour phenol inside then you now pour seeds of a plant let's say seed of sea beans inside we already know that the phenol there is going to alter the gene of what that sea beans so you must be very careful is the alteration going to be is it going to be okay is the chemical going to be okay for human consumptions is the alteration healthy for human all those questions need to be taken into consideration before you go into mutation breeding because mutation breeding is very dangerous so let's look at the most important method of breeding cross-pollination plants what are the most important method of breeding cross-pollinated plants we have number one method is mass selection number two method is developing development of hybrid variety number three is development of synthetic variety since cross pollinated species are naturally hybrid yes because the the objective for few cross pollinating plants is for you to have hybrid that means what genetically what modify species okay which maintain heterozygosity for many streets and loses vigor as it becomes what pure breed. Now over time, cross pollinated plants they lose their vigor, they lose their capacity to, you know, you know, to be viable. If they 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 become you know pure breed, that means if they if they maintain that line for so long, if they if they if they you know stay keep if you keep planting them for so long, they become what pure breed. That means they become homozygous for a specific trait. So in this case, they lose their word viability. And the goal of you as a breeder is to restore that plant to its what heterozygosity. That means it's to restore that plant to, you know, the plants having ability to maintain varying what traits or many traits. So mass selection in cross pollinator species take the same form as in self pollinated species how you select what for example if you plant crops you know that for example if you plant maize on the field it's not all the maize that will do well some will do very very well some will not do well so what do you do in mass selection is to select those ones that will do very well select them select them at the point of harvest you select, you select those ones that, that 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 have bigger comb that have many seeds inside those ones are superior variety. Select them and plant them in another year. So that kind of selection is known as what mass selection. Then the next one is um, hybrid variety. So the outstanding example of the exploitation of hybrid vigor through the use of F1 hybrid variety has been with corn. The production of hybrid corn varies in three steps. Okay, now, now this hybrid variety basically is uh, when you cross pollinate plants the, the 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 aim of that cross pollination is for you to have hybrid variety at the end of the day which is different from what from the original what parents now take note of this much of the hybrid vigor exhibited by f1 hybrid is lost in the next generation now listen after you cross pollinate two crops at the same genus At the end of the day, what you're going to have is what? F1 hybrid. Okay. Now, if you're not careful, in the next generation, if you plant that F1 hybrid, you're going to lose most of them in the next generation. That's what I'm trying to say. Consequently, seed from hybrid variety is not used for planting stock, but the farmer purchases new seed every year from seed company. Now, because if you want to plant um, that hybrid variety, it might not do well what these breeders are trying to do is that they don't they don't want the farmers to to be you know 
planting such crops every year. So what they want to do uh, as a plant breeder is let those farmers come to their own seed company and be buying these seeds every year. Because you buying these seeds every year, you are getting what? You are getting new, new hybrid at the end of the day. But if you don't want to buy seed every year and you say you want to plant the whole seed, that means, for, for example, if you want to buy seed from the farmer this year, and you say you want to plant the, the last seed you bought from them because that last seed you bought from them you have planted it it has germinated it has produced towards fruits and seeds and you say you want to plant the seed this year the seed might not do well that's the problem with what hybrid variety so you keep depending on the seed company for results Synthetic varieties. Synthetic varieties developed by intercrossing number of genotypes of no spirop combining ability. How do you get synthetic variety? It's by you intercrossing. You cross different, you know, superior variety. For example, I told you that when you plant a, a maize um, crop, during the point of harvest, you see some, some of those maize plants, you see some of them will do very well those ones that do very well you interbreed them again that means you intercross them again over and over again so that you can have different what varieties at the end of the day so that kind of cross is known as what that kind of uh, you know outcome is known as what synthetic what variety okay because you are basically intercrossing what genotypes that are of what superior combining ability that are of what superior what ability Next, mutation breeding. So, mutation breeding, the essence of mutation breeding is to alter the, you know, the, either the chromosome structure or the chromosome, chromosome number of um, that seed plants. So that uh, at the end of the year, we're going to have um, a unique, what, um, you know, variety. So, it is, it is a very dangerous process and you have to be very careful, okay? You can practice it using radiation, like the X-ray, the gamma ray, the beta ray, okay? You can also use chemical because we have chemicals that are mutagenic, like the phenol, the formalin, etc. etc. So these are the types of radiation and these are their main properties. You read through that. So these are the chemical mutagenes. A mutagen is what? A substance that can cause what? Mutation. So the, the chemical mutagen we have, we have the aka Acalatin agents, we have the base analogous, we have the acridine dye and others. Okay, these are their properties. Okay, the essence of this mutation is to alter the gene. Okay, so the speed of hydrolysis of this chemical mutagen is usually measured by the half life of the chemical. Okay, half life is the time required for, for the disappearance of the half of the initial amount of active reaction agents so you can see those um, you know chemicals and their half-life okay so the half-life is a function of temperature and ph for a comp for a particular what compound technique that okay the half-life of a substance is a function of the temperature and the ph so let's look at treatment of seeds with what mutagenic chemicals how do you treat seeds with what mutagenic chemicals? So you need the following apparatus like the conical flask, the beacon, etc. Then you need your you know mutagenic chemical, let's say phenol. So you must dilute this chemical with what? With distilled water. Okay. So you have to soak the seed. Okay. The seed has to be soaked in the distilled water for different hours depending upon the seed to initiate biochemical reaction. Okay, the chemical is found to be affected by the frequency and, and spectrum of the mutagen, depending upon the stage of cell division. So, what they are trying to say is that the action of the mutagenic, you know, agent is dependent on the stage of what the cell division of the plant. What stage is the plant dividing? So, the pre-soaked seed. The essence of pre-soaking the seed first of all, that means putting the seed in the still water, is to activate what biochemical pr process, uh, because it's the biochemical process that we initiates or that we helps the seed to break from dormancy and the seed to start what germinating. 
okay so for dormancy in plants to be or for dormancy in seed to be broken you know biochemical reactions must take place and these must be assisted by water so water is very, very essential for seed germination and for also biochemical you know, process so after the biochemical process is being initiated and the plants has undergo the plants are undergoing cell division the next thing is to soak uh, you know the the pre-soak seed into the chemical okay usually the point of the chemical is 10 times the volume of the seed you have to take note that you can decide to soak it for 30 minutes for one hour depending on the, your experiments so then for example then after then you have to plant the plants then you have to observe the growth okay so how to cross pollinate two plants how do you cross pollinate two plants um the first time i you know practiced plant breeding was in iit when i was serving i was placed um in plant breeding units so in the plant breeding units we were taught by a plant breeder on how to pollinate what on how to cross pollinate what plants i remember the plants that you must cross pollinate must be of the same what general must be of the same general so we do what inter generic what crossing take note of that is very important for example if you want to cross pollinate plants let's say um you have um, a brown beans and you have a white beans you have a brown beans and you have a white beans the brown beans is very big but it is not tasty why the white beans is very small and it is very tasty so what do you do when you cross both of them together under a contrast experiment you're going to have a hybrid which will have what a we should have a seed that is very big and very very sweet a seed that is very what big and very sweet so you don't need the old parents again because you already have a hybrid what you need to do next is what to plant the hybrid and when you plant the hybrid at the end of the day you're going to have what crops or you're going to have seeds that they are seeds are big and um, and um, their seeds are what sweet so if you take that one to the market as a plant breeder you're going to make money you're going to put money in your pocket and that's the essence of breeding so instead of you buying uh buying uh seeds of beans that is very sweet sorry instead of you buying seeds of beans that seeds of beans that is not sweet but it is very big today you buy that one tomorrow again you go to market okay i don't want to eat that one again let me go and buy uh seeds of beans that is very small and it is very sweet so instead of you having all those controversies within yourself the plant breeders have solved the situation by you going straight to the market and at the, and if you go to the market you're going to have what seeds that are very big and they are what seeds are what sweet so you're going to have what uh you know cow peel or beans that their seeds are very big and it's very sweet so plant breeding is very is very good so back to our experiment you have um, a brown beans i have a white beans so you want to cross pollinate them so that you can have hybrid at the end of the day so the first beans is what the giver why is it called a giver because it's that beans that will give its what pollen and the second beans is what the receiver that means what is the is the is the is the beans that will receive what the pollen from what the giver so that the end when you drop that pollen inside the pistol which is a female gamut of the receiver you are going to have what a hybrid at the end of the day so let's go into the practical here is how to cross two plants always use a sterile material use a material that is very clean that doesn't have um, pollen greens attached to it because pollen are in the environment they are in the air as i'm even talking right now pollen are just flying okay some can even enter my mouth and onto me so they're just everywhere so you must make sure that your apparatus or your materials are very clean okay so that you don't you know you don't uh you know 
mistakenly pollinate what your test you know plants with a pollen grain that you don't even want so you, you have, so a plant breeder must be very careful okay so the next thing is to what locate an open flower on a giver plant let's say the giver plant is what is the brown beans so you locate the flower okay then you open it okay when you open the flower you know that the flower now before you open the flower you just know that what well, the flower must be in the bud stage bud stage is what the final stage in which the flower will be before it opens by itself but you don't want the flower to open by itself because it's going to contaminate your process so before it opens go and open it yourself and remove the pollen green from there the pollen green is dust like remove it from there and put it inside a sterile what container next go which is number four now locate a close flower on the receiver plant go to the receiver plant which is what the white beans then you locate a flower that is about to open a flower that is in the board stage about to open so what do you do if you locate that flower use what a small sniper or tweezer or scissors to cut away the flower petal you cut away the flower petal carefully cut away the stamen that means that white beans it also have what a male gamut you don't want that we made gamut to be there you don't want that male gamut to be there because if the male gamut is there it will obstruct your breeding program and you're not going to breed well you're going to have what rubbish you know kind of breeding so your 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 aim is to remove that male gamut which is known as what this stamina from the white beans cut it away throw it away you don't, you don't need it again because what you need is what is the male gamut which is the stamina which is the pollen from the giver which is already inside your words inside your sterile container that is what you need you don't need the male gamut in the white maze again no no no. you need the male gametes you have already collected from the brown beans in a sterile container so if you come to the brown beans now we're using brown beans as a, we are we're using white beans as an example both white and brown beans so if you come to the white beans now remove its own male gamut straight away remaining what the pistol which is what the female gamut so what do you do when you have seen the pist the pistol which is the female gamut in the white beans what do you do next the next thing to do is to what is to pour all those your you know pollen which is in the static container is to pour it on top of the pistol on top of the stigma okay you can use brush you can use anything just let it touch the stigma then you close it back after you close it back after you close the 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 you know the flower back you tag it okay you tag the flower so that you can know that this is the flower you have worked on because if you don't tag it you're going to confuse yourself because you can't you can't work on all the flowers in the plant okay but it's very essential for you to work on most of the flowers okay all those flowers you worked on make sure you tag them so that you can differentiate them from the ones you do not work on okay after then tagging is known as laboring then after the number eight now reverse the process so that the receiver and the giver reverse notes now you can decide to change the process but if you don't want to do it you can just leave number eight so when the flowers start producing a fruit body you can remove the word plastic bag all right now listen after you tag it you have to cover the flower to prevent what other puddings from entering it okay because puddings are everywhere after you have tagged it that is a plant i've worked on cover it with a plastic bag or cover it with uh, an envelope to prevent what you know pollens other pollens from contaminating it that is number nine number ten when the fruit is fully produced use the seed to grow your first what hybrid plant now at the end of the day the flower you have tagged or you have covered with what plastic bag will produce what fruit so when it produces fruits that means what the seeds will be inside the fruit 
So it's that seed that you need. That seed is the is what is the hybrid. Okay, that seed is what the hybrid. The next thing to do is what that seed is not many. The next thing for you to do is to what plant that seed so that you can have what many seeds at the end of the day. Plant that hybrid so that you can have what many seeds at the end, what, end of the day. So that's how to breed. You can use YouTube. You can see all those examples very well. <clears throat> so the new feature on a first generation hybrid is called hybrid vigor or heterosis and it's usually the goal of what a plant breeding. So when you plant this plant, when you plant this hybrid, you're going to have what is known as what the F1 generation and it's called what the hybrid vigor. That means what viable what hybrid and that is the goal of a plant breeder. So at the end of the day, you're going to have what viable hybrid. There are many in number and that are very good in words in quality. So, hybrid vigor heterosis are the improved characteristics of hybrid plant variety when compared to what the two parent plants. So, if you want to compare this hybrid I have to the plants you have crossed, you know that what well, this hybrid is better because it has increased size, it has faster growth rate, it is sweet, okay, compared to the original what two plants or compared to the parent plants. So what is heritability? Heritability is a measure of how well differences in population's gene account for differences in traits. Traits could be height, could be intelligence, as well as disorder like, um, you know, chromosomal abnormality. So heritability has historically been estimated from study of twin. Identical twin has almost no differences in their DNA. Why fraternal twins share on average fifty percent of the DNA? If a trait appears to be more similar in identical twin than the fraternal twin, genetic factors likely play an important role in determining such traits. By comparing traits in identical twins with fraternal twins, researchers can calculate and estimate what their heritability. What I don't say, heritability is a function of what genotype. And also, it's also a function of what the environment. Heritability can give initial clue as to the relative influence of what nature and nurture. That means it can give a clue as to the differences in the genetic composition of that you know plant and the natural environment in which the plant is growing because the environment can also influence the gene of a plant to some extent. So this is this clue is very, very important to, to researchers, basically to plant breeder, because um, it helps them to understand the factors that influence what this trait. Next, repeatability is a concept derived from quantitative genetic theory. This is a concept derived from quantitative genetic theory. So when we talk about quantitative um genetics, we're talking about we're talking about um um, you know the genetic theory that has to do with um, you know characters or traits that you can measure like the height okay the size of the seeds and all those things so it describes the degree to which variation within individual contribute to the total variation in population so heritability describe how the variation in individual contribute to what the variation in the population that is the aim of what repeatability. Recurrent breeding. Recurrent breeding or recurrent selection is a cyclic method of population improvement but does not directly lead to release of cultivar. The basic step in recurrent breeding are intermittent evolution and selection. The main challenge is the difficulty of what? Intermittent steps. Since recurrent breeding is designed to improve the frequency of favorable array. So recurrent breeding is designed to improve the frequency of um, favorable allele. So that means alleles are genes of contrasting character. So the essence of recurrent breeding is to increase, you know, you know, their their number, the numbers of these alleles of this, uh, you know, contrasting character in the population. That is the aim for a quantitative word trait. 
So further breedings are needed to release the cultivar from what a recurrent word breeding. Next is GCA versus SCA. General combining ability and specific combining ability. So general combining ability is directly related to breeding value of parents and is associated with additive genetic effects. What are you trying to say? If you want to get general combining ability for a plant, you need to, you know, breed or you need to crossbreed the hybrid with what? With different plants in the population. Okay, so me, that means you, you, are, you are breeding a hybrid gotten from a genetic cross you now breed it with other you know individuals in that population okay so at the end of the day you're going to you're going to that means you, uh, invariably what you're, what you're trying to see is what you're trying to breed the hybrid with what other superior or you're trying to breed a plant with other superior what plants in that population so at the end of the day, you're going to have different what genetic you know effect in another in what in your desirable what plants why specific ability is relative that means is is less as compared to you know generic com, com, uh, general combined ability because in general combined ability you cross you intercross different plants why in specific cross, uh, combined ability is the relative performance of a cross that is associated with non-additive gene action prevalently contributed by dominance and what epistasis so if you want to select selection for general and specific combinability there are reasonably good reasons or good solutions to some of these you know problems above but almost none of none for others some of the questions which are involved are so if you want to select for either specific or general combinability you must first of all ask yourself this question given a particular set of record how can one best estimate the general combinability of individual family online and how can one best estimate the value of progeny of a specific cross between family or in breed line what proportion of the breeder resources should be put into a testing program having decided on the size of the testing program, what kind of test should be adopted? What relative emphasis in selection should be placed on general as compared to specific combinability? How much inbreeding should be done in the making of line? How fast should the line be made? So you need to ask yourself all this question. Thank you so much for listening and have a wonderful time.